Okay, there you are. Hey, what's Sorry, up? I'm driving. I'll... Not much. I'm driving. I'll be home in just like two or three minutes. Okay. I appreciate you helping. I can, I'll tell you a little bit um, about what's kind of going on with me. Um, like I said, in my text, I was raised pretty, pretty strict Pentecostal. I went to Christian school all but like two years of my, you know, school years. But uh, I had a car accident. It was four years ago on May the 3rd. So it's coming up on five years and had a total out of body experience. But uh, ever since then, I've been, and I'm not nuts because I never had this happen, but I've been plagued by spirits. Um, can you tell both, me both about good your, and, can you tell me about your yeah. out of body experience? Sure. You, did you, um, you I was in a car accident? Yeah, I was in a car accident. I was coming home from the funeral home that I worked at uh, because I'm a mortician. And uh, I was a, about a mile, mile and a half from home. And this was in Pennsylvania. So I was driving down a very steep mountain. It was pouring down raining. The last thing I remember was seeing 25 mile an hour on my speedometer and I locked it down into low two. And then the next thing I know, uh, I'm standing about, I don't know, 50, 80 foot away from my car, watching them cut me out of it. And uh, I had, I saw my grandfather that died like 19 years before. And uh, he walked right up to me, but he didn't have two legs when he died. And he was always blind in his right eye my whole life. And, and he wasn't blind, but uh, I got projected up into the mountainside, like where I hunted since I was a kid. And uh, it almost sounded like runder, thunder rolling through the mountainside. Uh -huh. And and then all of a sudden I heard this voice come out of the clouds, which I knew exactly who it was. There wasn't an ounce of doubt. And he told me that it wasn't my time that I needed to go back, um, that I had many great things yet to do. And then I, I woke up in trauma. Um, I had like 27 fractures which means my skull was pretty rough shape for a couple of years. Still not back 100%. Um, but uh, ever, ever since I've had this, if I go to do a house call uh, for the funeral home, which has happened a lot. And I can tell you if, if that person, if, if they went to heaven, I can, I can feel it because I light up with goosebumps from head to toe and I'm in churches all the time. So I hear ministers, you know, preaching and, but it's whenever I talk about God, my whole body lights up with goosebumps. And I know I'm not a perfect person by any means. Um, but like I said, since all this happened, I've had, some really weird uh, paranormal experiences, I guess you could say. And I tried to ignore it at first because I thought, well, now I'm just losing it, but no, I'm not. Um, I buried a little five-year-old girl last March and uh, this past March. And for two weeks straight, I got woken up in the middle of the night with something tapping on my side, kind of like a little kid would do to wake up their parent. And I was like, no, it, it can't be that, you know, I'm just dreaming about it until the owner of the funeral home caught her on camera. Two weeks, after, two weeks after we buried her, they caught her apparition on camera going into the viewing room that I set her up in, in her casket, which was really, really freak weird. Um, and after that, uh, I kept around that same time or just after I kept hearing when I would go to bed at night in the master bathroom, I could hear almost like a demonic chanting music. And yeah, I thought, well, somebody's just playing. Yeah. What's that? And I was just asking if that was in your house that you heard that. It was in my apartment. Yes. And, uh, 
I got sick of it one night because at the bottom of my bed stood this thing was that was blacker than the dark. It was darker than dark. How tall um, was it? Oh, about like a full grown man. Uh huh. I'd say close to six foot, if not, if not six foot, it was crouched down. I kept feeling something touching my feet. And I was like, now I'm just, I'm just tired. You know, I worked a long day, but it happened a couple of times. And only one time that I seen it, um, it was pretty, it was pretty gnarly looking. I mean, his teeth looked like broken, jagged glass. <clears throat> it had like yellowish green eyes. Um, and it was just, really dark darker than black i don't know how to explain it um like, like it was made out of a shadow yeah but it was kind of a solid form it right. looked solid and it looked but it looked um, like it had a shadow over it yeah yeah it was real dark yeah and <clears throat> and after it after it would kept trying to touch me i got i actually got pissed off got up I said to my wife, I'm not dealing with this anymore. I'm done with this. So I went, I put a, a cross over our door in our, to our bedroom and I put holy oil all over the house, walked around praying and talking, you know, speaking scriptures and stuff. And it stopped for a while. So we were living in Texas at that time. Uh, um, and we moved from South Carolina. So we moved back to South Carolina to this other house and it's starting to happen here and it didn't happen here until just maybe a couple weeks ago so you live in south carolina now? So I, yeah i'm in south carolina yes what part um uh, sumter it's kind of like the midlands of south yeah, carolina I, it's about an hour from the shore yeah i live in yeah, south carolina in sumter. yep oh do you yeah Okay, I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm down, I'm I'm down uh, yeah, I'm near Hilton Head. Or my car, I mean. Okay, so you're dealing with demons. Can you hear me? You there? I'm here. Can you hear me? All right. Well, he got uh, disconnected. So we're, man, that is so, that's an interesting story. Hopefully he will um, jump back in the Zoom meeting here in a second. <clears throat> He's obviously dealing with some uh, demonic entities trying to attack him. Um, a lot of people are dealing with this right now. I've, I've talked to so many people recently that are, um, like are seeing demons in their dreams. And a lot of people are seeing demons in real life. I've seen demons in real life, uh, on several occasions. I've cast demons out of people, uh, at least about 20 times before. Um, demons are real people living their lives, not even paying any attention to this demons are real let me see if i can email um this gentleman and get him back in here um maybe the devil doesn't want us to do this zoom meeting but it's gonna happen all right he sent me sent me another message let's see here i'm gonna send him another link y'all don't go anywhere this is a this is an interesting one I did not expect this. Come on, buddy. Here we go.
All right, we're back. back. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on with my phone. Well, you probably were, were from your data to your to your Wi-Fi, and it just acted silly for yeah. a second. Yeah, that's what it was doing. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, anyway, anyway, um, <clears throat> so that that started here, like I said, a couple weeks ago. But uh, let me walk out here a second so I can talk to you. It's cold out here today, isn't it? It is cold. I was going to go deer hunting, but I wasn't freezing my butt off. Yeah, but it's windy. They won't hear you out there, at least. Yeah, I know. That's about the only good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I don't know what's going on with me personally, spiritually, whatever. Uh huh. Like I said it's not that I don't believe in God. It's not that I don't pray. I do. But uh, I've been getting uh, memories that are coming up that I haven't, I didn't even know I had. Of, of everything bad I've ever done in my life has been flying through my brain. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm not perfect. I'm, I, don't, I don't profess to be, you know, a major Christian. I am, I'm not saying I'm not saved, but you know, I could probably always do a little better. Okay. But like when I was, when I was a little kid, I got to tell you this quick. Okay. When I was a little kid, when I was like, I forget how old, I, but I mean toddler size, I had an angel in my bedroom and I can still see it like it was yesterday. I never Ooh. talked about it. it. It had, it was about six feet tall. It had dirty blonde hair. It had a white robe with a blue sash. And it had, like, I could see, like, wings in the back of it, uh, whiter than white. And this thing glowed almost like either from within or behind it. And I never talked about it to anyone but my mom because I remember asking her who the man in the corner was. And I ain't talked about this in 50 years. And I asked my mom, I said, Mom, explain to my wife what happened to me when I was a little kid? She goes, oh, about the man in the corner. I said, yeah. She goes, do you know, I, I said, do you know what that was? She said, well, go get your baby book. I have it all in there. So it's in there. So it really happened. Um, I've been in four bad accidents in my life, throughout my life, that I shouldn't be here. There's, there's no reason I should be here. I mean, I bury people that, were in you know better condition than i was there is a reason why you should be here yeah yeah i I agree so the last time you had an accident uh yeah may 3rd of 2018 2018 uh you had an outer body experience where you actually died yep and you heard thunder and God's voice told you it's not your time. I need to come back. Yes. And that you, there's still things for you to do. Right. Okay. So here's what's going on with you, man. <clears throat> um, God knew you before you were born and he had a plan for your life before you were born. Right. And, and there's something that there's a there's an assignment that that you were sent here for. You don't know what it is yet. You'll you'll know when you know. Right. You I, right. I, <clears throat> but this yeah. is this was assigned to you before you were born. Right. And the and whatever it is, it's a it's big, um, because the devil has been trying to kill you your whole life. That's what my wife told me, yes. The devil's been trying to kill you, but he cannot kill you because he cannot stop what God is going to do. Right. Now, you're dealing with these um, these demons that are coming into your house. Yeah. And anoint your house again in the name of Jesus. And whenever, right. whenever you, uh, whenever these, you, f- you feel their presence, Cast them away oh, yeah. from you. 
cast them away from you in the name of Jesus. Take power and authority over them and um, command them. What I do when I feel demons around me, like if yeah. I, if somehow one of them gets in my house, because they're not allowed in here, but sometimes right. they, they find ways in. Um, I agree. Uh, when you feel them, cast them out. I, what I do is I will tell them to go to the abyss in the name of Jesus. Right. And don't ever come back. So they can never come back and mess with anybody ever again. Right. Um, but they are trying to, they're trying to stop whatever God is going to have you do. I believe that. Yes. The the little girl that tapped you and tried to wake you up, that was not a little girl. That was called a, that's what's called a familiar spirit. Okay. It's a, it's a ghost that is a demon that is trying to mimic that's what I thought. That person. That's what I thought. And they get you to try to believe that it's that little girl. Then you start trying to communicate with it. And right. you are communicating and opening the door for demons. So yeah, I agree. I don't care if it comes to you in the form of a cute little girl. Yeah. Cast that demon to the abyss until it don't ever come back in the name of Jesus. Go. Yeah. I just I never had this experience before. It's it's really weird. It's it is so weird. Um I remember waking up in the middle of the night one time and looking up and seeing this this thing that looked like a shadow. Yeah. Really tall, probably about seven feet tall, standing up looking over me. And I already knew what time it was. I, I did not get scared. I and right. I commanded that thing. So go to the abyss in the name of Jesus. And he just disappeared. And I went really? back to sleep. Huh. Yeah, we, I have, just, we have power over these things. Right. I agree. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, we have power over them. And we right. whenever they come around us and try to try to um torment us or try to scare us or try to block us from the purpose that God has for our lives. We got to, right. we got to take power and authority over them and tell them where to go and don't ever come back in the name of Jesus. Right. So anoint your house, anoint yourself, anoint your wife. And, yeah. and, um, ask God to, to, to place angels around your house and around and to protect you and your wife and wherever y'all go. Right. You have a specific assignment. That I wish I was. You don't need to know what it is. You, he told me. He he did tell me before I came back into my body. He, he said that something about I can't remember the exact words, but something about I'll tell you. Uh, something about they need to know. And he would let me know at the time. And mm -hmm. like three years ago, we lived, well, back in 2020, we lived in Somerville, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I told my wife, it, it was like nine o'clock at night. I told her, I said that there was, you know, gunfire coming. And I knew where people were going, but I didn't know uh, exactly how it was going to go, you know, happen. And she thought I was kind of losing my shit but uh around 12 30 midnight that night i had a kid shot on my front porch by my door uh, and the two guys that shot at him ran into the woods to the right exactly where i told my wife they would never had a premonition in my life didn't really believe in them i thought it was all you know made up but no well i, I was overwhelmed by it yeah you're obviously you obviously have a prophetic gift, man. And um so since you were born, you have a, a special light that God has placed inside of you. Yeah. And people can't see it, you can't see it, I can't see it, but the entities in the spiritual realm can see it, the angels can see it, and the demons can see it, and they right. want to put that light out. Because you were going to deal some, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you're going to deal some major damage 
to the dark side of the spiritual realm at some point in your life. Right. I believe that. Yeah. Because it gave me full body chills saying that to me. And whenever yeah. I know something's real and I know it's right, that's the feeling I get. And I have to go with it now because I, I've tried to ignore it so many times and it came out to be exactly right. You know what that feeling is? It's probably the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit, 100%. And I have felt it the whole time we've been talking. Have you? Yes. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've gave people full body chills just talking to them, you know. But uh, yeah, it happens every day. It, or, if, you know, if I pray or talk about God, I light up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too, man. I feel and the Holy Spirit all like several times a day. Sometimes, yeah. 10, sometimes 10 or 20 times a day. Yeah, I agree. And I feel like uh, it's getting more and more. Yes, it's Do intense. You know that too? Yes, yeah, it but, intensifies. Yeah, it's every day it's getting more and more, almost like we're leading up to something. Right. And right. I do believe that something big is something big is coming. I don't yeah. know what it is. Something probably gonna look crazy. I'm not quite sure. But um God revealed to me, gave me a vision that um a shaking is coming to America. Yeah. That's pretty <clears throat> much that's pretty much all the information that I got. Um I do believe that there are going to be blackouts connected to this. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's electricity blackouts or if it's communication, like internet and satellite right. blackouts. Uh, maybe both. I'm not sure. But I think all that stuff's coming. And I have a few other ideas that are speculation, which I don't like to get into speculation. But that's yeah. about all that I've been revealed at this time. And I feel like it's really close. And yeah. uh, he also told me that the time for for repentance is coming to an end. So right. we have a very small window for people to get right with the Lord before before some sort of judgment hits. I don't know right. if it's like the great judgment at the end of the age, or if it's just like a, you know, kind of like God brings judgment on nations sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I do know that judgment is coming. And it's coming soon, and people need to get right with God ASAP. There's no time to play around with this. I agree. I can feel it. It's it's very, it's almost like an impending doom feeling. Absolutely, you know, feels like impending doom. Yeah, absolutely. It is coming. It's coming, and it's coming fast. I mean, it could be, it could be next year. It could be five years from now. It could be right. next week. It could be. It could start in five minutes. I don't know. Yeah, right. All I know is it's soon. Right. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. And uh, I believe that God's going to use people like us during that time to do something. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I just... we, don't, we don't need to know what it is, and it's probably better that we don't know. Yeah, yeah. If God wanted us to know, if we needed to know, we'd know. Exactly. But we'll know I, when the, we'll know when the time comes. Yeah, yeah. I just I don't understand <clears throat> why me because I'm not. I mean, I'm not a bad person. I'm good to people, but I don't always do right things. You know what I mean? Well, name somebody that has. Nobody. No nobody one. Nobody but nobody but Jesus, man. God. I uses, know. God uses. People that have done wrong. He's so yeah. good. He's so good. He forgives, man. He forgives. If you just yeah. come to him and you give your life to him, all those sins and everything, he doesn't care about that. Right. He does not care about that. Right. Um, there's, there's, we can sit like, he's got me um, right now. I, he's using me to help people come to him all over the world. I mean, I talk to right. people in Europe and Africa and Asia, all over wow. North America. And a month ago, I would have never guessed I was doing this. That I really? Was doing this. Yeah. 
would have never guessed I would be doing this. And it all started from one comment that I made on TikTok. Really? I made videos uh, about, I started, God started guiding me to make videos that the time for repentance was coming to an end. Yeah. And I started making videos and I tried to tell people, listen, you got to get all the sin out of your life. And so, uh, one guy commented on the video and said that there's this one sin that he keeps trying to repent for and he keeps on doing it and he can't stop doing it. And I responded in the comment and said, hey, man, uh, I know what your problem is. Email me. And like the next day I had like 20, 25 emails. Wow. People that had seen that comment. And trying to figure out what's going on with them. Yeah. And, and God gave me uh, the ability to see what's going on inside of people and yeah. guide them to overcome it and get closer closer to him. Because God is trying to save his children right now and pull them out of the fire. Right. But it goes, I'm, I'm like you, man. I'm like, why me? I've lived such a terrible life, like such an awful life. I've done so many things wrong. My, my list of sins is will probably wrap around the world yeah and, and somehow for whatever reason it is really humbling man it's really humbling to think that god would use somebody like me that's lived such a terrible life to to do his his will and his work yeah and i'm just i'm not playing around with life anymore man i'm just doing what god wants me to do i'm focused on him 100 percent uh it's a full-time job at this point that I don't charge nobody for, and, that, yeah. and that's okay. This is what I'm supposed to be doing right now, and God has something for you to do. Right. And don't don't waste time sitting there questioning why me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a waste of time to think about that. Right. Just focus on God. Focus on um, getting closer and closer to Him every day, and. When you come around demons, lay the smack down. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been different the last few years. I can tell you that for sure. It sure has, man. It's been crazy. I have never would have ever guessed that we would see what we're seeing today. No, no. It's wild. No. It is it, wild. But, some, but at some point, God is going to say enough is enough. And he's going right. to lay the smack down. And when he does, everybody who is not repentant of their sins and living their life for God, for Jesus, and being guided right. by the Holy Spirit, it ain't going to be good for them. I agree. I agree. I, I I guess that's, well, I know that's why I get, I guess, taunted the way I do, you know, constantly, daily. Mm -hmm. Um, I, ne I never had that so intense before where, <clears throat> where it really bugs me. You know, like I said, I'm, I know the devil talks to your mind and, and God talks to your heart. So <clears throat> it has to be him. No, making God, me God doesn't talk. God doesn't talk to your heart. No, no. God talks to your gut. Well, yeah, that's what I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. The devil talks to your mind. God talks to your, to your gut and your heart is the battleground. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been pretty crazy. Like I said, I, from that accident, I've been through three surgeries. I had two last summer, um, yeah. final fusion and, uh, full shoulder reconstruction. And it's been, crazy since this accident with like major pain bodily pain mm -hmm. you know and then dealing with crap psychologically you know spiritually that's pretty. that's the, one of the uh that's one of the downsides for uh being a prophet man prophets yeah. have, prophets have hard lives because the devil is trying to destroy them right i agree but why you because you can cut it bro yeah you can handle it so just deal with it deal yeah with it and your rewards are in heaven right right 
yeah, they sure haven't been here on earth. <laughs> no, no, you, you're going to get enough. You're going to get enough to get by. You're going to get enough to have, to be comfortable for right. the most part. Um, and you, you don't know, maybe, I mean, honestly, I do think that once this judgment comes that we were just talking about, yeah. I do think that God is going to hand out some pretty amazing blessings to those that have been, been uh, remained faithful to him. So I agree. we could get, we could get some pretty sweet things here before we go to heaven. But even if we don't, that's not why we do it. All right. Right. Uh, so okay. we'll, we'll see what happens. We just got to keep fighting this fight until we have our, our David and Goliath moment. And we, yeah. We kill that giant, and then we get to celebrate. I think all that's coming. Yeah, I do too. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, listen, man, um, email me your phone number, okay? Okay. And and I will and I will text you. Um, I want to keep in contact with you. Let me know if, if there's anything I can do for you. Okay. I, I am, appreciate um, I think I'm like two hours away from you, bro. So Okay. Um, you got, you got somebody that's right around the corner that if you yeah. need some help, um, I got you. Right. Right. And yeah. if, you, if you need to talk, just hit me up, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. No problem, brother. I'm going to be praying for you. All right. All right. I'm praying for you too. All right, man. I do appreciate that. God yeah, bless thank you, man. And thank you for your story, man. That was actually really, really amazing. Really? Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. God bless you, brother. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Have a nice Christmas. Thank you. Take you care. You too, buddy. Bye bye. Uh